Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Christopher Aaron. It is late on August 8th, 2018, and I thank you for being here. The last update was two weeks ago, so there's a bit to cover here. And to the casual observer of the precious metals market, it looks like nothing is happening at this point. But you are not the casual observer of the precious metals. So let's go into a little bit of depth and see what's actually shaping up here. I do think there is a recovery that is brewing, especially for the price of gold. And let's take a look at the parameters, how far this recovery could go when it begins shortly. Let us look at the short term action first of the price of gold. So we've seen just this back and forth grind here in the low 1200s over the last week or two. Um, once again, you know, not really making a new low at any point over the last few days. Uh, so it looks like gold's struggling to fall at this point. It's struggling to keep going down. Uh, let us turn over and look at silver, and I would say the same thing. Silver really hasn't fallen for the last two weeks. So you've been right in this range in the low to mid 15s. And so when a market stops falling like that for a couple of weeks in a row, uh, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, is the present decline over? just from a technical basis? Could there be a recovery rally? And how far might that rally go? So let us take a look at the best assessment from the charts. And I just want to tell you, um, as we bring up the gold chart here, some people have asked over the last couple of weeks, you know, what will I do if the precious metals keep moving lower over the next uh, year or 18 months? Uh, you know, is this going to get a little boring, you know, continuing to talk about the decline in the precious metals. And well, it may or may not, you know, I'd say once again, the time to really uh, tune your skills, tune your own education and understanding of the markets is really when the least number of people are paying attention because we can really look at things with a much more clear sense of direction. Uh, so that is the time to do that. I will also be beginning to focus on some other markets here other than the gold market over the next several weeks. And I'll be showing some snippets of that. I do intend to be covering some more markets coming here in the not too distant future. As we look at gold, uh, because the truth is these lessons, these uh, technical points, how markets move can really be applied to any market. You know, So let's start using the tools. Let's start using these uh, these systems here to analyze other markets that may be a bit more exciting even over the short run. Precious metals will always remain the focus of this channel. So let's look here what's happening with gold. We are looking at the short run. This is the spot price of gold since the beginning of 2018, the highs that were forming here at the beginning part of the year, um, and the decline that we've seen since April. Now the things that I want to draw to your attention, first of all, I already have up here labeled these three lines and I just want to show you what these three lines are. These are the Fibonacci retracement levels for gold for the entire decline. As you know, I'm big on these Fibonacci retracements at specific times, certain times markets uh, really respect them. And if you ask me, one of those times that I'm anticipating is going to be now coming up. It's always from a major high, which we had here to a significant low, which I believe is setting up, we then measure these ratios, the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, the 50% Fibonacci retracement, and the 62.8% retracement. We measure these various ratios, these numbers coming from that sequence, that Fibonacci sequence. We measure those relative to the move in gold, and it gives us a probability. It's only a probability um, but when we use this in conjunction with other forms of analysis, it can give us a, a real strong sense um, of where this market may be heading. So let's look. And of course, we are focused on price here foremost. You know, there's a lot of other discussions and debates going on about fundamentals. I say just bring it right into what matters most, which is the price. And I would tell you if you're really being honest with yourself, I think probably the price is the most important thing. So we look at gold and we are looking at these Fibonacci retracement levels that have formed here. Um, and you're going to see how important these are. Now let's draw on a few other levels that have been showing up here for gold. We're talking about the sandwich type of pattern, the rectangular 
consolidation that gold was in uh, between January and May when we saw the breakdown here. Black, of course, corresponding with horizontal support and resistance. And you can see the importance of this here as gold, for example, uh, as it was bouncing. Look at how many times gold bounced in the low 1300s. Uh, one. And if you really zoom in, you can see multiple mini hits here. Two, three, uh, four, five, six, a few mini hits in there. And of course, seven, eight, you know, so it depends how we want to define them. At least one, two, three, uh, four major hits and several mini hits in this lower level. And so look how important these levels are. Look at how after gold broke lower through this zone here in the low 1300s, uh, this was in May, look at how gold could not get back above that level after that. So, I mean, just that one, think about that one data point there, right? The breakdown uh, here in gold and then the inability to get back above that breakdown point after it was broken. So this is what happens here, the phenomenon that we're talking about, support turning to resistance. You had buyers, people stepping in and buying gold at these lows, and then when the price broke below that, they chose the same point in here, the same price level, to sell at break even, which is what caused gold to be unable to get back up that. So that's, that's one of these things that you can use in technical analysis when you see specifically a rectangular this really has to be a rectangular consolidation as we saw here in black to give us the assessment uh, of where gold is likely to stall out on a future hit of that level so the 1300 level now after that breakdown of course we've begun to see something forming here of a channel the lower hits on this channel really clear to see the upper hits there's only two but anytime we can have a, a system of a parallel channel falling here, markets like symmetry. Why do markets like symmetry? Because markets are the sum of human beings and human beings like symmetry. Uh, I like symmetry. I'm, I am a human being. I look for patterns. The sum of the market looks for patterns. Why? Because we're human beings and we move in patterns. So we see something of a channel, down channel forming here. And then what do we see? Even more of a convergence, a quicker decline forming here since May. Notice the highs coming down very aggressively and the lows not coming down nearly as aggressively. So this is one of those patterns. We have seen this over and over and over again in the gold market. And we also see this in many other markets. But we're talking about this wedge pattern here um, in the vast majority of cases wedges are bottoming patterns and it looks like gold is getting ready to break that bottoming pattern now so what does this tell us with a wedge with this kind of a pattern where the buyers are coming in uh, at higher and higher relative intervals than the sellers uh, this tells us that all things considered the bias is that the sellers are going to be taken out they're going to become exhausted. This is too aggressive of a decline to be sustained. And the wedge breaks upward. Now, looking for targets here, this is the challenging point. Targets are not so easy to calculate from wedge patterns. There, there is no inherent target of a wedge pattern. Where do we derive the targets from? So looking at green here, um, where can we derive a target from for gold? It has to be based on other aspects of this chart. Where are some other levels that gold has respected in the past where we would expect to see all things considered? We would expect to see sellers show up. Where would some of those levels be? Hmm. 38.2% Fibonacci retracement is a good start. And notice how this level corresponded exactly with this swing high back from July uh, at 1,266. Okay, notice this swing high uh, matching exactly with the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. What else does this match? The top end of the channel. Man, so when we have three levels already, a swing high, a Fibonacci, and a channel boundary all lining up at the same level, there is a very, very significant chance that the confluence of those points, one, two, three, 
are going to represent the region where gold tops out on a counter trend rally if this is in fact a counter trend rally so i've drawn the circle over here because most likely it's not going to go straight up and hit this boundary you know tomorrow most likely this is going to happen over the next several weeks uh, and this could extend out into the future into september so i've drawn the target shading here a few weeks into the future and coming at the confluence of these three levels perhaps gold even breaks the down channel on this recovery so remember this zone we're talking about here 1250 to 1265 remember this zone this is the probability for the recovery that i think is imminent remember this zone and let's just zoom it out one more time and let's not forget what we're talking about now gold has broken down this is an important failure in the gold model at this point don't let anyone tell you anything otherwise all the talk about as much you know manipulation as i know exists i know that it does as much of that as exists um, as much as a legitimate market as exists the truth is we've seen the breakdown here and this will be respected by the market so notice that on the breakdown I'm talking for a target. Remember that 1250 to 1265, uh, that green shade that we just showed? Where was that? That would uh, come right here on this bigger picture perspective. And you can see how that would ma match up with the larger model here, which is saying gold should recover back to the broken trend line, plus or minus, hugging the trend line, perhaps uh, flirting with breaking above the trend line. But the bias would have to be at this point for gold that it is not going to break above the broken trend line. It is not going to recapture it. That has to be the bias unless proven otherwise in technical analysis. So that's how this works. Now, what does this mean when we get to this point, when we see the recovery that I think is about to happen and we get into this point? Ah, well, this is where it really depends on your situation. And I would just tell you, really evaluate where you are at this point, how much leverage you have, whether you're sitting on any gains or losses, whether you're a stacker or whether you're trading highly leveraged uh, CFDs or futures contracts. What's going to happen is that that recovery that we see in a highest probability assessment is going to be the time to lighten up on your leveraged risk forms of gold. It will be the time to initiate some sells, perhaps even some shorts. And there are things that I would short and there are things that I would not short in the precious metals market. For example, I would not short the physical metal, but I would short some of the paper contracts to offset some of the declines. Absolutely. I see nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Using the market to our advantage and getting off our high horses There is a premium service that does include flash updates that go right out to your inbox. We cover gold, silver, the mining sector, as I said, and then everything else that is affecting gold, silver in the mining sector. These are the, these are the markets that are all funneling into these above ones. Individual mining company research. And like I said, coming up over the next few weeks in the premium service, we'll be discussing as we get closer to that retest in gold of the broken trend we will be discussing protection strategies you know we'll be discussing taking some capital off the table and perhaps initiating some paper protection strategies and then looking at the potential for lower targets for both gold and silver unless proven otherwise where would the next potentials be to buy after we see the retest attempt I also work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Please know you can reach me on the consultations tab on the website. We speak by voice uh, or we also do email, depending on the nature of your inquiry. I do not represent any precious metals companies whatsoever. I do no one that I use to purchase gold and silver, which is called Boolean Exchanges in New York City. I know them. I know the owner. I've been there. I've seen them. I've seen the warehouse. Uh, so I trust them, and there is a coupon code below if you would like to order from them, perhaps on the next low that comes in the precious metals, which we will be looking at. 
uh, as it develops over the next several weeks. You could try them out if you want to save $10. The coupon code is below or not, you know, or not use whichever dealer you like. It really doesn't matter to me. I'm just sharing the research that I've done. And that's what I do also with individual uh, clients is to share research and perspective and tailoring it to you, the individual. So thank you once again for watching this. Let us watch this rebound that I believe is imminent in the price of gold. And let's see, let's watch that target zone, that 1250 to 1265 zone, because that will represent a very important confluence of resistance. And we really want to see how does gold respond when it is in that zone. And I think that response is going to set the stage for what to expect over the next 12 to 24 months. Thank <laughs> you.